Let's see what's meant by circuit analysis. For the most part in this course, what happens is you'll be told, say, a battery voltage. Maybe it's 12 volts. And then you'd have some sort of circuit, and maybe there's some resistors in it. Let's say 10 ohms and 12 ohms. And generally, the job you would have to do when you're asked to do circuit analysis is to find out how big is the voltage across each resistor. And how big is the current going through each resistor? And maybe how big is the current coming out of the battery and going back into the battery? So generally, we're given a battery voltage, and we're given resistor values, and we find the other quantities. A few ideas that we've got to keep in mind. The first is that currents are the same in series. And it's the voltages that divide. And we've talked about this already, that we'd have to have the same current through both light bulbs. Current isn't used up, and we get a common current going through that circuit. And those two bulbs are in series. But the voltage would divide. We'd have a certain voltage from the, ba the battery. Let's call that V. And then we'd have a voltage across each bulb. And if this were, say, 10 volts, then these two numbers here might be 7 volts and 3 volts so that they would add up to 10. And that's really all about conservation of energy. We only have a certain amount of energy per charge available here, and it gets used up in one light bulb and then the other. This little example here is an example that involves an RIV tables. RIV tables are just sort of useful devices for helping you to organize your thinking. So we've got resistance times current by Ohm's law is equal to voltage. So in other words, out of these first three columns, if I know any two of them, I can always find out the third. Now, we said that the current has to be the same throughout this circuit. And the value of that current is going to equal that battery voltage, 6 volts, divided by the equivalent resistance of the circuit. And the equivalent resistance will be 1 plus 2, or 3 ohms. So we're going to get a current there of 2 amperes. And it's got to be the same throughout, so we can write down 2 amperes, 2 amperes. Now we can use Ohm's law. Resistance times current is equal to voltage, and we get values of 2 volts and 4 volts, which means we're going to get 2 volts across this first resistor and another 4 volts across the second resistor. And you'll notice that they add up to give 6 volts the voltage of the battery. We can also extend our table because power is equal to current times voltage. So we can use the same trick again. And once you've done the RIV table, the last column is always a bit trivial because we just multiply 2 times 2 gives 4 watts. 2 times 4 gives 8 watts of power being used in the second light bulb. Another thing to keep in mind is something that's very simple but very critical. Voltages are always the same in parallel. And now it's the currents that divide. So here we've got two bulbs in parallel. And you remember this idea that anywhere on a continuous piece of wire, the voltage has got to be the same. And what that means is that everywhere here, that's a continuous piece of wire. So it's all going to be at the same voltage. In fact, it's connected to a switch here. So all of this would be at one voltage. All of this is a continuous piece of wire, so it's going to be at the same voltage. And say this might be a 3-volt battery, so this would all be at 3 volts. This is the negative side, so that would all be at 0 volts. So both lamps in parallel get the same voltage across them, 3 volts. It's the current now that splits. The current comes along out of the battery, and it'll split up. Some will go through one light bulb, 
sum will go through the other light bulb, of course, I coming out of the battery would equal the sum of I1 and I2. And then, of course, the currents rejoin again, and it'll be I as a current coming back in to the battery. So let's try another RIV table. So this time we've got a parallel circuit, and I'd like you to pause the video, try this question, come back for the answer. Okay, so hopefully what you said is that the voltage has to be 6 volts across both of these because they're both in parallel. And what that means is that we know two out of these three columns. We know these two columns, so we can figure out the third column. Voltage divided by resistance is current, so 6 divided by 6 would give 1 amp. 6 divided by 3 would give 2 amps. And then, of course, for the powers, 6 times 1 is 6 watts, and 6 times 2 is 12 watts. Now, to get a little more general, we'll talk about Kirchhoff's laws. We're going to simplify them a little bit for our purposes, but we'll have a loop rule. It says the voltages around a closed loop must add to zero. Well, what that means is, let's say you've got a battery here of voltage V, and then you've got a couple resistors here. Let's call them R1 and R2. Then, of course, the battery pumps up the voltage. It's kind of a positive. And then you've got voltage drops across R1 and R2. And for our purposes, what that means is that let's call this delta V1 and let's call this delta V2. Then the magnitude of V1 and the magnitude of V2 will add up to V. That's really just conservation of energy. And then we've got a junction rule. And it simply says that at least for our purposes, what it's going to say is that, let's say we've got two resistors in parallel, R1 and R2. Then we'd have a certain current coming out of the battery, and it would split up. This is our junction right here, where the wire splits up. We'd have a certain current coming into R1, we'll call that I1. A certain current coming into R2, we'll call that I2. And our junction rule, for our purposes, just says that that I has to equal I1 plus I2. So here we've got a circuit with four resistors in it. We've got two loops, so we can apply the loop rule twice. There's one loop, there's the other loop, and let's say we name the voltage across here, we'll call that delta V1. We'll call the voltage across here delta V2. Let's call this delta V3. And this one, delta V4. Then if we apply our loop rule and we look at loop 1, we would say, oh, well, 12 volts from the battery has to equal delta V1. We have to have 12 volts across that 1 kilo ohm resistor. If we apply the loop rule to loop 2, still 12 volts from the battery, and the magnitude of that voltage will equal the sum of the other three voltages. So that's going to have to equal delta V2 plus delta V3 plus delta V4. OK, let's apply our junction rule now. If we applied the junction rule, we'd say, OK, well, there's a certain current coming out of the battery. Meets a junction right here. And the current going into that junction has to equal the current going out of the junction, which would simply mean that for this situation, by our junction rule, we would say I equals I1 plus I2. We could apply that as well to this other junction right here. We have two currents coming in. Once again, they'd be I1 and I2. They would have to add up to the current going back into the battery. OK, another uh, RIV table to do. Pause the video, try this question, and then come back for the answer. OK, the first thing you can say in this question is you know that it's got to be 12 volts across the 6 ohm resistor. So I'm going to write my resistors down. It's 2 ohms, 4 ohms, 
and 6 ohms and we know immediately that we've got 12 volts across the 6 ohm resistor. All right? This is a continuous piece of wire so it's all at plus 12 volts there which has to be 12 divided by 6 has to be 2 amperes. So we now know that there's 2 amperes flowing through here. Now a good thing to do here is to calculate the equivalent resistance of that whole network. We can get the equivalent resistance because we've really got two 6 ohm resistors in parallel, two equivalent paths. So our equivalent resistance there would be 6 ohms divided by two paths, which is going to be 3 ohms. And that means that the current coming out of the battery, so I coming out of the battery, has to equal the voltage of the battery divided by this equivalent resistance. And the voltage of the battery is 12 divided by 3 will give 4 amperes. So we now know that we have 4 amperes coming out of the battery. And we'll have to have 4 amperes as well coming back into the battery. Now if 2 amperes goes this way, uh, we've got to have 2 amperes going this way. And we could have figured that out already. When, if we have equivalent pass and we have 2 amperes going through here, we've got to have 2 amperes going through here as well. So we're going to have 2 amperes through all of the, the resistors. 2 times 2 would give you 4 volts. 2 times 4 would give you 8 volts. So you do notice that in total you've got 12 volts across those two, which is the voltage of the battery, which makes sense. And now you can figure out your power, 8 watts, 16 watts, and 24 watts. Another one to try, pause the video, try the question, and then come back for the answer. Okay, once again, I think it's a good idea to calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. And we've got two 2 ohms in parallel, so that's 1 ohm. So our equivalent resistance is going to be 1 ohm plus this 1 ohm for 2 ohms. And what that means then is that the current coming out of the battery will be given by the voltage of the battery divided by the equivalent resistance which is going to be 6 volts divided by 2 ohms to give 3 amperes. So we've got 3 amperes coming out of the battery. That's going to split up, and it's going to split up equally because these are equivalent paths. And that means you've got to get 1.5 amps here and 1.5 amps here. And then, of course, it's going to rejoin again here. And that means that through the 1 ohm resistor you're going to get 3 amperes again. So we've just figured out all of the currents in that circuit. It's going to be 1.5 amperes, 1.5 amperes, and 3 amperes. And now we can work out the voltages as well. 2 times 1.5 gives 3 volts, and 3 volts, and 3 volts. And so what you can see here, we're saying that we've got 3 volts across those two and 3 volts across that one. Now, you'll recall that the equivalent resistance of those two 2-ohm two resistors in parallel is 1 ohm. So what we've really got here in our circuit is 1 ohm and 1 ohm. And so because the two resistors here are equal, the voltage splits up equally, and that 6 volts divides as 3 volts and 3 volts. And one more. This time we don't have equivalent paths. The math is going to be a little bit messier, but the procedure's going to be exactly the same. So I'd like you to stop the video, try the question, come back for the answer. Okay, so what we did here is we found out the equivalent resistance of the 35 and the 25 in parallel, and that came out to be 
14.58 ohms. Then we added that to this 15 ohms here to get the equivalent resistance of the whole network. That came out to be 29.6 ohms. Then we found out the current coming out of the battery, this current coming out, which is also going to be the same as the current going through that 15 ohm resistor and back to the battery. And that came out to be this 3.38 amperes. We put that into the table. And of course now we have two out of the three quantities here. We were able to get the voltage across the 15 ohm resistor as being 50.7 volts. Now the remaining voltage, the 49.3 volts, remember it was 100 in total, so 100 minus 50.7 is 49.3. That has to be across both of those other resistors. They're in parallel, so they get the same voltage across them. Then we can use Ohm's law to find out the current here and here, and then of course the power is always kind of trivial. And now a couple IB questions. Once again, I'd like you to pause the video, try the question, and come back for the answer. Okay. Well, if we use our junction rule here, we would say that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Now, there's no answer like that here. Uh, the next thing we could say is that if you've got twice as much resistance, then you get half as much current. So whatever the current I1 is, it splits up. And twice as much is going to go through this smaller resistor than goes through here. I2 is going to be twice as big as I3. That is, I2 is twice as big as I3. Now, do we have that possibility here? I2 equals 2 times I3. That's your answer right there. It's going to be C. So the amount of current that flows is always inversely proportional to the resistance. And another IB question, once again, pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. The first thing you'd probably say to yourself is that the voltage across X and Y is the same. They don't have an answer that supports that. We could redraw this circuit with the equivalent resistance of X and Y. And being as those are all identical resistors, if this resistor here is R, this is going to be half as much because we have two equivalent paths there. And what that means is that our voltage is going to divide the bigger voltage across here because it's got more resistance. We get more voltage across bigger resistors. And that corresponds to answer B here the potential difference or voltage across Z is greater than that across Y. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.